Hey guys, still there, and welcome back to Transport Fever 2 Season 3, Episode 3. I have been running a couple of experiments with this particular gameplay session, and I have found that it is really not that easy to get this thing profitable. Right now, I have a whole 5206 in the bank, and I am running, well, very, very moderate profits. But this is a skewed number because I uh, actually sold a couple of vehicles. And this one isn't entirely telling the whole story, because I still have to do a whole lot more maintenance. So I've been running experiments. How can I make money? I've set up bus lines that ran from uh, Amsterdam Zuidoost through Hilversum, Amersfoort, uh, Ede Wageningen, and I think I ended up in uh, Velp eventually. So just a whole line over here. That turned out to be moderately successful. It wasn't really too profitable. I tried running a second train, because the train that I have running over here between Amsterdam and Utrecht is actually relatively profitable, but there's a catch. These things are, well, they're profitable enough, but with one train, my infrastructure is still relatively expensive. I'm paying about 68 to 73 per half year, that's the time frame that I'm using. And that means that overall, this thing, yes, it does make money, but about 20k per year. I could sell all of this stuff and demolish my stations, and that would save me some cash. Um, but again, 20k per year, it's not really something that you do the whole infrastructure for. These things only become more efficient once you have enough vehicles running along them. Then I tried another way of making money, and that was over here. I just borrowed another one and a half million because I still have some room. Uh, sorry, two million. And I bought 50, I kid you not, 50 horse trailers. And I set those running around on a loop. And that actually seemed to be the most profitable way of doing business. Now, there is also another opportunity I've spotted over here. This is uh, Sertogenbos and Os and Helmond and Eindhoven. What I have over here is pretty much all that I need to make steel and then machines. So I have an iron ore mine here, coal mine there. I have a uh, forest here, which I can turn into sawmill. And then the planks are going to go here. The uh, coal and iron ore that I mentioned is going to go here. And then it gets off or gets turned into steel, which is going to get delivered here. And then I finally transmit that to, uh, for example, Eindhoven, Ensertogenbos, and potentially other towns in the uh, greater distance. Um... It's going to require a lot of investments, though, this whole thing. So I have found it to be an interesting, potentially profitable opportunity, but at the moment, not quite. As for the lines which are running inside the towns, they're doing okay, but they won't make you rich. The game still makes money based on how far you're transporting your cargo. The farther and the faster it gets to where it needs to go, the more money you make. So that means that, for example, a bus line is usually okay. Um, these intertown bus lines, they well, they do all right. I mean, it's not dreadful, but like 5k, uh, 9k, 11k, it's, it's really not going to get you that much money. The uh, Utrecht internal line is only on 2100. And that is, keep in mind, just the profitability of the line. So revenue minus cost for the vehicle. What that does not factor in is the cost for the infrastructure of the vehicles and the, sorry, not the vehicles, the um, uh, the maintenance for the infrastructure. The vehicle infrastructure is rather high, but then I also have a lot of depots or not a lot of depots even, but uh, truck stops, bus stops, stuff like that. That is also cutting into my bottom line. Now, what I'm going to do is to uh, first get my loan out. Stacks it up to 2 million. I'm going to adjust this one a little bit to make it slightly easier to get into and out of. Because right now there tends to be a bit of a, a crossing over here. That does not make it for very efficient maneuvering. So this one is gone. Then I'll set up another truck stop which I'm going to rotate. It just needs one long stop. Uh, maybe the other side's easier. No, I think it should be on this side. 
Because then they come in, they drop it, or they uh, pick it up, and they get out. If I'm not mistaken. Let's check. In here. Yeah, exactly. That's how I want them to move. And then I want another street access point over there. And another exit point here. So now it's just a simple drive through. Pick up, get out. Once we are down here, this is a point where they generally don't run into each other. So I can keep this here and I don't have to adjust it. Then, once they're here, they uh, actually have a pretty easy time getting in there. They don't interfere too much with each other. But I do want to change one line. And that is the line that's uh, supplying Etelure with fuel. I have found that there can be made a small tweak. Because at the moment, I have my road vehicles on the uh, fuel line running from here to there. They're doing this. And then going back. The other vehicles... The ones that are doing the crude line are running empty from here to there. So what I'm going to do is set up another truck stop right over here. And that's going to be two platforms. I have an exit on this side. Oh, come on. Really? You're going to be like that again? There you go. I have an entrance here of sorts. Now, the fuel line, once it's done in Turnhout North, they'll pick up some fuel, and there's not going to be a whole lot of it, and then uh, move through here, and then head north. That's the plan. The uh, Etelure fuel supply no longer starts in Turnhout North, but starts here, in Breda Exchange, so they don't have to go too far. And then this stop is only going to be used by the fuel line, which is there to drop off the oil and then fuel. Uh, sorry, drop off oil, pick up fuel, and the fuel is also going to be distributed to Turnhout. Ideally, I would also set up a road between here and there. They're not terribly expensive, these dirt roads, and they will for make, uh, make for faster transport. So right now, it's just simply get out of the depot, run right to Turnhout, and turn back. Now it's time to start feeding in more vehicles into this line. And, um, well, here we go. Let's put it to very fast. I'm using these things, I believe. I do like to have these in a uniform sense. Uh, no, I'm not using these things. Managed vehicles. I'm using the other ones. Alright. And so starts the convoy. Right now we have 42 vehicles running on this one line. So <laughs> this is what it's going to look like. Uh, this is just a massive convoy of these horse-drawn carriages. And initially they all start very, very close together, of course. But over time, this actually spreads out a little bit more. And that is due to these guys picking up fuel, having to make a slight stop, pick up fuel, and then get out. So uh, <laughs> it doesn't look like much right now but over time it will get better trust me it will get better uh, initially this line is going to run very very deep into the red because I have all of these vehicles and they have yet to pick up their stuff so initially this part from here to there is empty and then from there to here is the most profitable bit um, Tilburg annex sorry Tilburg annex to Tilburg south and from there to north it's, well, it's okay, because they're running out with half cargo. And on the way from here to there, it's again half cargo, I think. No, not always. First fuel for Etelier is already being delivered here. So that's going all right. Now, here we go. Here's the convoy. Move in, pick up, move out. And this is when they start spacing out between the vehicles. So I don't have this whole convoy, and hopefully with that little spacing in between, they're not all going to be waiting this long, because they're all going to be neatly spread out over the line. Now, there's definitely no shortage of crude supply here. I have a lot of this stuff, and, well, I think I could use trucks eventually, just to make sure that I can transport everything. Right now, I just, even if I wanted to, I could not get rid of all that. 
Uh, multiple reasons. One, I don't have enough transport capability on my vehicles. Two, I think I would completely, completely clutter up all the roads if I do that. If I try to get all of these vehicles to, uh, or all of the uh, supply from here, well, let's say there's 140, so I would need about another 30 to 35 vehicles just to get this done. I already have 40 running around, and they're, well, they're still crowding up here, but you can also see them starting to spread out, so let's say this is about 40. Uh, then we have another, well, maybe, well, actually, no. Reconsider. Maybe you can run 100 vehicles on here. Something in that range. Now, every time they drop off, they drop off for about 5,400, 5,395. And immediately, this thing jumps to life, but there is so little being delivered, and it is a 2 to 1 ratio, that there is very little oil actually being delivered from here uh, to the oil refinery. Sorry, fuel refinery. So overall, yes, it is profitable. Uh, this line does make money, although, it, well, you could be fooled into thinking that it does not at the moment. But overall, this does work. Now, I believe we are approaching the end of the, the big queue here. I just hope that they don't run too much interference for each other here, but I think they just just about bypass each other. The only part where they could cause a bit of a jam is over here, once they're both trying to exit the station. And if that happens, because I'm running too many vehicles, I could always decide to have a secondary truck stop over here. So drop off, and then from another truck stop, take it over to Etteler on the west side. I think this might be one of the newer vehicles. No, this is an old one, four years old. Seven months old. Here we go. This is one of the older ones. And now we have a very nicely spread out convoy of uh, initially crude and then fuel being delivered. Sorry, crude oil, then fuel in those phases. Now this last part of the journey, not terribly efficient. Uh, this one has managed to pick up a whole two units of fuel. And sure enough, it works. But it's more so to make sure that I'm not deadheading. That I'm not transporting nothing across my way to uh, get back to the fuel refinery. No, to the, the crude oil supply. Um, initially in the first year, it is not very profitable doing this. Because, as mentioned, you still have to figure out that all of these things uh, have to get loaded. They have to then get to the destination and so forth. But overall, I am making a lot more money on the roads than I used to. The trains keep going up and down. It's, well, 20, three and a, minus 3.5, 20, minus 34. So he probably hasn't quite arrived yet. What I would love to do for this train is add another carriage. The thing is, those things are really expensive. A carriage is going to set me back 300,000 for the Nicholas, or 407,000 for the passenger car. I could also just add one coach for 141,000. Uh, Passenger-wise, I think these might be more efficient because I can transport 12 people for 280,000 or 13 people for 307 or 14 for 407. Now, this vehicle is using some fairly expensive carriages. Let's see if I can adjust that. It has a capacity of 28 right now. Yeah, not really. When is the power rating going to go into poor? There. I could upgrade it to 60. 60 capacity. It's going to be a long train. 77 meters long. Power rating is mediocre, but I need a whole million to do that. I can still borrow half a million, so I'm more or less on the way to getting that. But I have found and I have tested that, it yes, it does work. But you run into a different problem. And that's right here. Utrecht and surrounding towns cannot supply passengers fast enough in order to fill up the whole train. And then what happens is that you have one of these trains running around without a full haul of passengers. And when that happens, well, the whole system slowly but steadily starts to collapse. Because then you find that you run out of cash very slowly and, well, you slowly bleed to death, pretty much. 
Anyway, I am gonna let the game run in the background and um, well, just slowly but steadily start infusing more and more vehicles and I shall be back with you in a little while. Alright, I've let the time run on quite a bit and I have actually been getting some profitable years, although not by much. This is of course the difficulty level really kicking in, really making itself known. Hard difficulty means that you just get less for your lines. Now, as you can see, I have a lot of vehicles running around here on the uh, Tilburg crude oil fuel line. And right now I have a total of 62 vehicles. Now, those 62 vehicles are bringing in a decent supply of money. This supply is about 200,000 a year. And that is, of course, just vehicles and their expenses, but not really the expenses that I incur by having a... Uh, a truck stop, a truck stop, another truck stop, and another truck stop, and uh, truck drop-offs over there. Still, ever so slowly, we are actually making some money. And what little money I am making, I'm immediately reinvesting and getting more vehicles. Once you look at the chart over the last couple of years, you can see that um, initially, I am pretty much even in expenses versus earnings. Then I get a little bit more expenditures versus earnings. And now I'm, well, still fighting it. And now it seems to be like I'm getting slightly more earnings than I have cost. That's where I want to be. That's how I want this thing to progress. But it is really <laughs> a patient game. Um, it just takes forever to get a little bit of operating money and then buy one or two more vehicles. So there have been periods of time where I was just letting this game run in the background, grab a cup of coffee, um, and basically sit back and watch the mayhem because I just did not have that much to do. Like here, right now, I have 45,000. Um, now I can buy another two vehicles here. And no, no, I can't. Too late. Just got to wait for a couple more of these vehicles to tick in. There's one, there's two. 20,000, 25, I can buy one vehicle. Yes, that's another one. So now we have 63. I can only keep doing this so long as there is still room on these roads. And for now, there are still some spots, like here and there. So overall, the, <laughs> the roads are getting pretty crowded with horse carriages. Um, I got a, well, I wanted to draw your attention to this, by the way. It, the year is 19, sorry, 1861, and yet I have managed to achieve a almost military precision of having a vehicle arrive every 13 seconds at one of the stops. Every 13 seconds a horse-drawn carriage arrives, drops off, picks up whatever it needs to do, and moves on. Uh, this is <laughs> for 1861. Um, I find it very amusing to have that many vehicles running around. Yep, I'll take another one. Um, and this is pretty much the way that I've been playing the game. You get a little bit of money, you buy another vehicle of a vehicle line that you know makes money, and you just rinse and repeat. That's what I've been doing, and that's, well, ever so slowly making my company more valuable. Um, let's see. Table... There was one that said headquarters. Yeah, here. But I don't believe there's a chart for the headquarters for how valuable your company has been over the last couple of years. Top speed, <laughs> 45. That must be the train. Oldest vehicle, 11 years. Total tracks, 7.5 kilometers, give or take. Cargo transport, 4,800. Passengers, however, 9,111. So I'm actually transporting a lot more passengers, but the passenger transport still isn't making me nearly as much money as I would like. The train... Mm, nah. It's... It's half and half. It's alright, the train. But if you just look at this chart, 305... Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, 305 versus 159. You, you could argue, oh, that looks great. That looks great. You're making a lot of money off of this train. Yes, the train itself is making a lot of money. And then there's the train stations. And the train stations, well, they don't exactly have their own chart. They have their own chart that says how much is being transported and how much is being uh, loaded, offloaded. But that's the only thing I'm getting. I'm not getting any information on how expensive, for example, this one station is. 
That's something I would really like for the devs to introduce. And let's say a fourth tab that says finances. How much am I paying for this station? How much am I actually getting to uh, pay for a station that is over here? Is that worth it? Because right now I can more or less deduce it, I think. Um, the infrastructure would consist of the stations and the signals along the way, of which I ha don't have too many. And then there's the depot. That's all that I have at the moment in so far as the infrastructure exists. Then you have the maintenance for the tracks. That's something that is just, well, it's slowly going up, it seems. Not really sure why, because as far as I know, tracks don't particularly age. So it's not something that I should really be paying attention to. Uh, maintenance for the vehicles, ever, well, mostly steady. This one apparently had a sort of a skewed year where the train might have arrived a little later than normal. Uh, that's why I'm also getting a slightly higher maintenance and a slightly lower profit. Because overall this train is running full all the time. Anyway, this is just a big game of be patient. Be patient, be patient, be very, very patient. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to let the time progress a little more, well, probably a lot more, and see what I can come up with then. Alright, I've let the time progress a little bit more, and I gotta say, the money is, well, it's coming in ever so slowly. As you can see in this chart, I am slowly progressing to make more and more and more money. A little while ago, I was doing about 800,000 with an expense that was significantly higher, and the blue bar just keeps going up and up and up, and I have just crossed 1 million. Now this year, uh, or this period, was actually quite good. 1 million 06 made, and 965k costs, so about 40k profit. Then I started investing a bit more, so my expenditures are higher, and this year, or this period, it's actually looking quite alright. The situation is uh, definitely growing. We have 122, 171, 149, 138, so that's relatively stable. There are a lot of old vehicles. That's something I'm definitely going to tell. Uh, there's a lot of old vehicles. Fortunately, that doesn't really matter, because you don't pay extra for vehicles which are old. The running costs stay the same, they stay flat. It's just that the emissions go and go up a little bit worse. Well. That's If that's the worst, then that's something I can perfectly live with. And of course the value is ever so slowly decreasing, but... Well, I've kind of written these vehicles off altogether anyways, so I'm not too fussed about that. One unintended side effect of powering my own economy, my own company, with uh, this line over here... ...is that both Etonleur and Turnhout are turning into very interesting places. And this is why. Turnhout has 184 residents and 215 workplaces, so I am missing a couple of workers. I don't exactly know how that impacts the game. I'm not sure if that means that the industrial area could grow faster than it does, or uh, that the whole town might need more people, that it's going to be a more interesting place for people to go to. I don't know. But if you visit some of these buildings, you can see that this one actually has no vacancies. Uh, this one has one vacancy, this one has none, two vacants, none. So, there are quite a few job openings in this town. And the same goes over here, in Etalure. Etalure also has a couple of workplaces which are perfectly filled. This industrial building, built in 1856, four workplaces, none of them vacant. And supply rating goes up and down depending on when and where the vehicle drops off the fuel. The other buildings, well, some of them have one vacancy, some of them have none. Um, it goes all over the place. But the discrepancy for Etonleur is actually worse. It's 214 residents versus 259 workplaces. So this means for me that I'll probably have to bring in more people here. Because I would rather like to see Etonleur grow and then drop off even more fuel. Now, the amount of fuel that's being delivered on the, this uh, truck stop here is a lot. That has to do with the uh, crude oil fuel line, which has now grown to 73 vehicles. And the drop-off rate from the vehicles over here, the Etteler fuel line, uh, it's not great. Sure enough, they drop off a decent amount. 
and they almost fulfill all of the supply that is currently uh, or all of the uh, demand that currently is over here in Ettenlur. But aside from that, it's not making me a whole lot of money, this line. Sure enough, it's 13 vehicles versus the 71 that I have running around here. But if you look at the crude line, that's 252,000. And let's say that, well, arguably you could try to divide that by about six and st or five rather and still more or less want to end up at the same rate. Uh, you're not going to. The Etteler fuel line really doesn't make that much money. It only makes 25,000. So every now and then I add one or two vehicles to this line, but I don't want to invest too much more than that. Now what I have also been uh, testing, and that is in one of the other off-screen tests that I did, does it make sense to set up a bus line between Etteleur and Breda? Not really. Not really. Um, there are 113 residents over here in Breda versus uh, 218 in Etteleur. But Breda has a perfect balance between residents and workplaces. So over here, well, they don't really have a need to move. Moerdijk, same thing, 107, 110. Other towns, Rosendaal, 109 versus 110. So as much as I would love to try and get people into Ettenleur, I wouldn't know where to get them. Tilburg, uh, maybe I can get people from here. 107 versus 106 workplaces, so one whole person seems to be unemployed. Uh, shopping facilities would also be nice to supply. And I might be able to do that. But the nearest, well, easy connection is this. One, two, th sorry, one, two, three in uh, Weert or to Valkenswaard. Providing food to Tilburg at the moment is not really high on my list of priorities. I also have the food processing plant here. I could ship farm stuff, uh, what is that, grain, to this alcohol distillery and then from here to there. But again, it is going to take a long time because I am going to be relying on trucks, which is, well, it just takes forever for one of those things to get all the way from here and to there and then back. And on the way back, they probably wouldn't be bringing in anything. Well, actually, I just found the Ruhrmond farm. Let's say I start a route here and then bring the grain all the way there to the Turnhout distillery. And then all the way back here to the food processing plant. And then I can supply Weert and Volkswart and Helmond. There is one little thing that I would need to do. And that's build a very long road. Now I do have about 230,000. Which is actually really good. It's mostly because I haven't been investing in my vehicles these uh, last couple of years. Uh, the thing is, a truck stop is expensive. Even a standard issue truck stop is going to cost you 73,000. So I would need one truck stop here, another there, and another over here, and then I'm not even counting the road yet. Uh, yeah, no, he here, there, and there. I don't think that these two are close enough for me to actually be able to do both with one truck stop. I am willing to try, though. Oof, that's 71k for a road, are you kidding? Uh, 87 the other way. <laughs> no thanks. Oh, come on. There you go. Now, hopefully I can catch both of those with one truck stop, but I very much doubt it. Now, I can catch this one here and this one over here. Ah, oh, crap. And then I'm not even counting the road yet. I don't want to go through Weert if I'm transporting stuff. Because it's not going to be efficient. I'm going to be caught in traffic in Weert itself. So I don't want to do that. Um, that means I have to bypass it. So let's say from here, more or less a straight line-ish to here, to the uh, distillery. Let's see how far I can get with my constantly varying budget. And keep in mind, I cannot loan any more money. I know that people are probably going to be uh, clamoring in the comments. Oh, you need to pay off your loan. No, not yet. Not yet. I know that the loan is pushing on the amount of cash that I'm getting on my profits. But at the same time, I am 
able to, uh, by virtue of having that money available as expenditure or as uh, money that I can spend, I can use it to grow and I can use it to grow my profits. So yes, you have a perfect point. I should be paying off my loan. I just am not going to be doing it yet. There will be a time and place to do that, but now is not that time. Now, can I get this road out of the way? Uh, yeah, I still need to get... I can pretty much go through the open area here. Ideally, this would be a train. But lacking a train, it's going to have to be trucks. And this could be another one of those massive amount of trucks which are moving back and forth. Especially considering that it takes two grain to make one alcohol. Um, I might set up two lines. One starts here. Gourmand Farm. Moves all the way there. Then picks up alcohol and moves all the way back. But in order to make sure that it picks up enough alcohol, I will also set up a road from here to there. And actually, I might need to do that first. Although, no, it's too short a road. I probably won't, or route, I probably won't get anything out of it. How far do I still need to build? Oof. Seriously? That's 500,000 for a road? No, it's doing some sort of weird climbing thing somewhere. Let's build it in small increments. Because I don't really believe that it has to be that expensive. Sure enough, road building can be expensive. But not 500,000 for a dirt road. That's very excessive. Now, fortunately, as far as I know, you do not pay any sort of maintenance on roads. You do on tracks. But roads, well, they're just there. They are just there. And I don't think that I'm paying anything for that. Maintenance roads, nothing. I wouldn't even know what type of road you would pay maintenance for. No idea. And it actually suits me very well because I don't want to be paying any maintenance on roads. If I'm going to have to be paying maintenance on roads and I connect two towns, then I am also uh, want to be able to make it a toll route, so I get money for every road or for every vehicle that passes through it. Otherwise, it is just not worth my time. And sure enough, later in the game, I might be able to do it, because then I will probably be pretty flush in cash. But these first years, well, you just have to be patient. You have to grow slowly, you have to grow strategically, and you're going to have to be very, very patient. Potentially go AFK for periods of time. And uh, <laughs> interestingly, um, I've been recording this episode for about an hour, an hour and a half. Um, every now and then I buy a vehicle and for the rest of the time I have just been using this. Yes, you can laugh to read up about the baby stuff. Because in case you haven't heard yet in uh, September this year, 2020, I'm expecting my first kid. So uh, lots to learn, lots to read, and well, I didn't actually expect to be combining my YouTube job with <laughs> with being able to read in the meanwhile. But yes, I believe it can be done. Anyway, um, I'm going to be continuing building this road off camera, but for now I'm going to call the episode here. The money is going up ever so slowly, and as long as I don't expend too much, I should be growing at a pretty decent rate. So next episode, you'll probably find that I have built this road and that we're moving vehicles along it, trying to transport grain, then alcohol, and then alcohol back. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Sorry it's not too active yet, but don't worry. These are just the early days. And this is probably, judging by the size of this map, going to be a long, long playthrough. So join me next time and we'll see what I can build then.